Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in each one of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, for you are our rock and you are our redeemer. Amen. Here we are at the start of a new program year at the church. Every September, the Sunday after the Sunday after Labor Day, we have God's work our hands Sunday. We do service projects. We kick off our Sunday school and gather our students again. And we gather as a community, some who have taken time to vacation and be gone during the summer, recommit themselves to church life for the fall. Here we are, September, beginning again. I tried to remember what we did this year, this time last year, and I genuinely could not remember. I don't know if it's because I just blocked it out of my memory or because so much has happened in the last year, but I, can't, I know we weren't in person, but I don't know what we did to kick this year off. I do remember two years ago, however, and I remember it more clearly than I remember last year. Time has become very strange, hasn't it, since COVID? Time is a tricky thing. Time moves linearly, but time also moves circularly. And if you're like me, it was a real blessing to hear this year the sound of the school buses after missing them last fall and knowing that we are beginning again. Many of you know my family has moved recently, temporarily, into a rental house while we get some work done on our home. When we moved, we moved only the stuff we needed, just for a couple of months. And for a few days, the house was beautifully clear of clutter, Everything was clean and orderly and put away. There was no trash. There was nothing to trip over. It was such a lovely beginning. And I honestly don't know how in two weeks we have generated so much mess. Junk mail and little plastic toys from McDonald's and a bag of grapes gone bad. Piles of clothes have burst from their boxes and there are socks everywhere. Suddenly that nice clean slate is chaotic again, but I don't think it's ever gonna all get put away until we move back. It's got me thinking about this song from the rock musical Jesus Christ Superstar called, Can We Start Again, Please? Raise your hands if you know that song. It's sung by Mary Magdalene during Jesus's trial. She recalls the early days of their friendship when the disciples were just gathering and everything with Jesus seems so full of hope and possibility, and she wonders how it all got so bad. She sings, I've been very hopeful so far. Now, for the first time, I think we're going wrong. Hurry up and tell me this is just a dream. Could we start again, please? That sentiment of wanting to start again, it applies to far more than just the cleanliness of a rental house. It applies to so much that's been happening in our world lately. I was struck in all the memories that we had that we shared together as a nation, as a community of September 11th, how much we wished we could go back to September 10th and do things differently, but also how much many of us, including me, wished we could go back at least to September 12th and not set ourselves on this trajectory where our collective grief and woundedness and profound trauma turned into woundedness and grief and trauma inflicted on other people. I'd love to go back, to go back 19, 18, 17 years and make some different choices as a country. Could we start again, please? Ditto with climate change. Some of you know I'm now serving on the Synod Council. The Synod is, think of it as the regional collection of ELCA Lutheran churches in our area, in the metropolitan Washington DC area, there are about 75 congregations that together make up a synod. And I serve on the council. I was pitching a new idea for the synod to really focus in on climate justice. And I pulled out a resolution that we passed as a synod, pledging among other things to cut our church's carbon emissions by 25 to 40%. It was, I have to say a bold resolution my name was on it. Guess what year we did that? 2010. Guess, yet, guess what the deadline was for cutting our 
church's carbon resolute carbon emissions to by 25 to 40 percent 2020 <laughs> guess what year it is now 2021 could we start again please go back in time with the benefit of hindsight or at least the kind of collective will that has come from seeing where we've gone and start over who doesn't know a relationship that's gone off track a child who grew up with wounds you didn't even know they had gotten. Who doesn't wish in some area of their life that they could have a do over because next time you'd get it right. Beginning again in some area of our lives, I think is something that most people want to do because there's something about a beginning, the freshness, the excitement, the possibility and the fact that nothing has been ruined yet. We know that very quickly our world turns into a mess, our relationships end up hurting each other before they heal each other. And we want to go back to the beginning. Our scripture today brings us back to the beginning, in the beginning when God created the earth. It is such a beautiful reading, and I'm grateful that Kathleen read it so well. We sank into the rhythm of this reading. Scholars think that this reading was used for worship originally. In fact, they're fairly certain that it was used for worship in order to humiliate a leader in a good way. That every year they would celebrate a weekly uh, ritual where a leader would step down and remember that God was in charge of creation, that God was the ruler, was the leader of us all, and go through this ritual of remembering God is the creator. We get this rhythm then of creation, order created out of disorder, life made out of lifeless stuff. It's a beautiful reading, especially to read outdoors, to hear some of those winged creatures, to see seeds bursting forth from vegetation. Creation brings forth its own creation. Land produces, animals are told to be fruitful and multiply. And there is a certain beauty to it and a certain hopefulness to it. And if you're like me, you want to bask in that sense of God's good creation and God calls it good over and over and over again. And then God creates humans at the ends of it and tells us that we have a special relationship with the rest of this creation. We are made in God's image. We have a certain amount of power, but we are to use that power so that we can eat and so that others can eat as well. We are to subdue the earth and have dominion over it, but that subduing of the earth, it more means tilling it so that we can grow some things in it. It doesn't mean trample over all of it. And our dominion over the earth, our power over the earth, should at the very least by us and those who follow Jesus be seen through the lens of Jesus' power, which is the power to heal and to love and to serve and to care. We know what's happened to our earth. Can we start again, please? The historical answer is no, we can't start again. There is no going back to 2010 or 1970 or whatever point in history you would like to start back at. There is no going back to our own beginning and having a world that is unsullied we can't start again historically. But friends, I think the spiritual answer to that question is different. I think the spiritual answer to the question, can we start again, please, is absolutely. Absolutely, we can start again. And this is what the pattern of creation teaches us. With that moment of rest built into it, where God takes a break and rests in what is called God's peace. And then restarts again. This was used to pattern a people's lives so that they too would take a rest and then start again. And right in the middle of their lives in what our Jewish brothers and sisters call the temple of time, there was the space, the space to rest in God's peace from all their labors and the space to start again. 
this passage, this Genesis passage was probably passed down orally from generation to generation, probably for hundreds, possibly thousands of years. It was finally written down most likely when the people of Israel were in exile, when they had lost everything, when they like so many other people throughout time and history wished for a restart. They wrote this down then, they read this together then. And they remembered like we remember that God creates not only past tense, but present tense. And that means that God can start something right now, something in your life, something in our life, something that is new and fresh and beloved, something that is more than we could ever imagine, something that is hopeful, something that is truly new. In Christ, there is a new creation here and now and every day. On Sundays, we always or almost always say this little thing before our communion liturgy. I don't know if you've ever noticed this little line, but we say through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave. On this day, proclaimed resurrection to the world. On this day, started something new. God works in time to make all things new. And this is not an undoing of the past, but a redemption of it. This is not a throwing in the towel and saying, that's it, we got to move again. It's saying right here and right now, we can dig in and through the power of God, trust that we can start again. I've been reading James Baldwin lately, and he has this wonderful quote. He's talking about the midst of all sorts of personal despairs. And as a black man writing in the early 1990s, when he wrote this particular quote, things looked particularly grim. He wrote, not everything is lost. Responsibility cannot be lost. It can only be abdicated. And if one refuses abdication, one begins again. Not everything is lost. Responsibility cannot be lost. And I read that and there was something about that quote that grabbed me, partly because I was already thinking about this sermon on beginning again and the fact that God has a new beginning in store for each of us. And I think this is how it connects with this Genesis reading. God, by creating us, took responsibility for us. And God will not abdicate that responsibility. God didn't create us and then just say, good luck out there. Hope it works out for you. Throughout time and history, God has intervened and God will continue to do that, continues to do that through each one of us. And so because of the power of God, because of the power of God at work through Jesus Christ, then and now there is a new beginning. This is our moment to say, okay, here we are right here, September 12th, 2021. We are not living in the past. We are living right here and now with the God who has made this world beautiful, who has given us a good creation, who has given us the gift of community. You people online and in person, we have hung together for what, 19 months is it? And some new people have even come into our community. That's how good God is. Right now, we are being recreated by the Spirit's power, strengthened for service to a world in need. God has given us the treasure of these sacraments, bread and wine, body and blood. God gave us the blessing of these children who are our promise and our responsibility. And we won't abdicate our responsibility to them. Will we? We teach them the stories of faith. We trust that God will work through us and through them for the future that God has in store. Through them, through the gathering of this church, and through our proclamation that what God made is good, present tense, we begin again. The one who created the holy order is still creating. 
the one who set ri healthy rhythm and balance between species is still creating. The one who rested not because God was tired, but because God was at peace is still creating. And the one who named not only all of this out there, but each one of us, good, good. Turn to somebody and say it, you are good. Okay, did anybody not hear it? Turn behind you, Jim, somebody needs to hear it. You are good. That God, that God is still on this day, making a new thing. And so we will too. We will begin again. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>